I'm Molly Kimson. I'm a visual artist with UF Health Shands Arts and Medicine here in Gainesville, Florida, and today we're going to be making collagraphs. Collagraphs are a form of printmaking, and most forms of printmaking require presses or sharp tools or really heavy equipment, and collagraphs are pretty easy. They just require foam, paint, and cardboard. There's lots of other materials you can use as well, but today I'm just going to show you how I make them with patients in the hospital. The first part of making a collagraph is to make your stamp. So I've got my foam here cut to the same size. That way I know I can't possibly make the image area bigger than the backing board. For a pattern stamp, you can make something that's kind of non-representational or abstract. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, and it certainly doesn't have to be perfect. Before you glue down anything, you want to kind of play around and get all the pieces where you think you're going to want them. If you prefer to draw out your designs on the foam, I recommend using markers or Sharpies or something that has a felt tip that won't make an indent inside the foam. Once I've got my stamp kind of organized there, what I'll do is I'll take my glue, and put enough to coat the surface of the foam, but not so much that it'll take forever to dry. When you're working in the hospital with patients, you generally have a pretty small window, and you want to make sure to not uh, make a project carry on any longer than you need it to. You want to make sure the foam doesn't go outside the mat board area just because it won't get the correct amount of pressure. While the glue is still wet, you can slide things over just a little bit as well. But once the glue sets, the foam should be very much stuck. Once you're finished, give everything kind of a tap down to make sure there's no edges that are sticking up. And let it dry. Your next step will be to get a thin layer of paint on your stamp. Remember that acrylic paint is permanent, so you wanna be very careful. In patient rooms, we tend to use plastic plates like this, or paper plates, to keep workspaces neat and organized and not get paint anywhere else. What I recommend is to uh, spread out the paint just a little bit to get a thinner layer on your brush. If it's too goopy, it'll fill in the cracks and get all over the backing board of your print, which isn't that big of a deal, but... You have to work kind of quickly as well because the acrylic paint can dry very quickly. Once it's evenly coated, you're going to be ready to print. And printing can be a little bit tricky. One of the first things you want to do is you want to make sure it's going down completely straight. If you press it down and then slide it, your print will be distorted. So you want to press down and add pressure all the way around. It may take a few tries to get your first print looking good, but stick at it. Hold the paper here and lift it to make sure it's transferring. There's our first one. And you can continue adding the same color to fill a pattern over the page. You can also rotate the stamp to create a different effect. Don't worry too much about the spacing in between. It's really hard to get it totally perfect.
All right. So now I have my square printed, and now I'm going to choose to use a second color. I think I'm going to use black for the next color. So to clean off your collagraph, all you need to do is take a paper towel and get the bulk of the paint off of it. The last thing you want to do is take this mat board and put it under running water to try to get the paint off because that will melt your stamp. So now what I'm going to be doing is putting a second layer on top of my piece. You can either use the same stamp and rotate directions or use a different stamp entirely. If you're using two colors with the same stamp, I recommend using the darker color for the second layer. And here, what I'm trying to do is print it the opposite direction as it was printed the first time. And it creates an interesting effect. And you can use these collagraphs almost indefinitely, as long as they're holding up. I've used some of the same collagraph stamps for uh, printing on fabric for years at this point and most of them were just made with mat board. And I think this one is done. You can also make more complex collagraphs and add detail using a pencil. You don't want to use a mechanical pencil. You want to use one that you have to sharpen. Here I've got a bird. And I'm adding in lines with my pencil. These are areas that will uh, show up the color of the paper in my collagraph print. I'm making sure these lines are really deep so that the paint doesn't go inside of them. You should be able to feel them if you're to press on the foam.
principles are still the same. For this one, I'm going to be using black paint. And again, getting a nice thin layer. And you can see I've pressed down into the foam enough that the paint isn't going inside of it. Those little channels will stay and show up in my print. Don't worry too much about not getting it on the backing board. It kind of adds a little bit of character. And with a more complex print like this, it often takes a couple tries before you get just the right consistency and amount of paint. I go over my bigger areas just a couple more times. And then I'm ready to print. It's the same principles, but if you're printing a larger version, you wanna press like so, and then slide it off your surface and put the paper on top. You want to use one hand to hold the paper on top of the collagraph and the other hand to add pressure. You can check by lifting up half of the paper to see what the impression is like. If you need to, you can add a little bit more paint really, really carefully to touch up certain areas. And it's a little bit on the light side, but I still like it. So there we go, we can see the brush strokes that I've done there. Um, you can have a little bit more consistency if you use a foam roller, but I kind of like the character of it. So that's how you would make a larger collagraph print. Well, thanks for watching. And remember, that was just an example of how to make collagraphs with foam, but please feel free to experiment with string. You can even use tacky glue or anything that's gonna make a raised surface on your print. Uh, there's a lot of people who've used recycled materials, corrugated cardboard, Anything you can find that makes a texture can make a print.